So last time I didn't really give any proofs, so this time I'm going <laughs> to uh, actually prove some things. Um, let me quickly recap. So, so last time, um, so quick, quick recap. So last time I mentioned that, uh, so, so we're, we're going to work with M as a Kähler surface, so complex dimension two, and uh, I, 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 omega naught is some, some fixed Kähler metric. And let's recall that, um, that there exists a, a unique solu smooth solution, a, max a unique maximal solution, maximal smooth solution, omega t of the Kähler Ricci flow. And the Kähler Ricci flow was, was ddt of omega is minus the Ricci of omega, where we start at omega naught. Um, for, for t in zero to capital T, and the capital T was given by this formula. It's the supremum of, 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 of T positive, such that the cohomology class omega naught minus T times the first Chern class is, is a Kähler class. And last time I also mentioned that, uh, so we also, that, that, that minus C1 of M is the same as plus C1 of KM, where this is the, KM is the canonical line bundle. It's the canonical line bundle. Canonical line bundle. Okay. So uh, what I want to do today is is talk about, well, his, his, so here's my, my goal. Um, I want to consider the following case. So consider consider M with um, the Kronauer dimension not equal to negative infinity. So not, not equal to negative infinity, which let's recall this means this means that if I take the canonical line bundle and raise it to some power, then this has a, it at least has one holomorphic section. So this has a holomorphic section, has a global holomorphic section. For, for, for some L which is sufficiently large. Um, and I also want to assume that M is, M is not minimal. So I want to assume that M is not minimal, which, which means that um, th there exists a minus one curve on M. So there exists an, an exceptional curve, which could be blown down. Okay. So what I discussed last time is that the Cayley Ricci flow contracts minus, in this situation, contracts minus one curves. And I want to talk about that. So my goal is, is I, want to prove, I want to prove today two, two theorems. Uh, so the first one says that um, under these assumptions, uh, there, ex there exists a map, a blowdown map, pi from m to n, um, which blows down, uh, blow blowing down um, finitely many um, uh, disjoint exceptional curves. Um, e e1 up to ek um, down to point points on n. Um, this is a holomorphic map. Um, and um, alpha, which I'm going to define to be the cohomology class omega naught minus t times uh, c1 of m. Oh, okay, maybe I should first say, okay, maybe I should first say t is finite and, okay, t is finite and, so this, this makes sense. This um, satisfies 
that alpha is the, is the pullback of um, a cohomology class beta, where, where beta is Kähler, is a Kähler class. Is a, is a Kähler class on N, on N. So this is the, the limiting cohomology class along the kähler ritchie flow. And what I'm saying is that is the pullback of a Kähler class from, from N. Okay, so that's the first goal. The second goal is, is to say that, is to show that um, as, as T, so actually this, this statement has very little to do with the kähler ritchie flow. It's really more, more or less an algebraic statement. So the capital T less than infinity is assumption or conclusion? It's a conclusion, yeah, it's yeah. a conclusion. So, okay. yeah. Theorem one, yeah, T is less than infinity. It's, it, it's actually one line to see it, okay. So theorem two um, is that as T tends towards capital T, omega T um, converges on C infinity lock of M minus the union of the EIs to, to some omega t, where, 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 where omega t is a smooth Kähler metric on, uh, on, 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 this, on this m minus the union of the ER. Okay. So this means smooth convergence on compact subsets. Okay. So this, uh, to give a reference, so, so this... Um, this is in, uh, you can find it in my lecture notes with Jan Song. I think the fact that one can do this in, for algebraic surfaces is, so probably very, was very well known, I think, to algebraic geometers, although they wouldn't have used this language because they weren't interested in the kähler ritchie flow. Um, the Kähler surface case, maybe, I don't know if people knew about it, but anyway, we wrote it up in our lecture notes. This actually more or less uses, it uses work of Song Tian and, and Tian Zhang. Um, yeah. So, so I'll, I'll put, put, it, uh, put it down for this, for this theorem, given, given this one. Okay. So let me now, so th those are the goals. So to, to do this, we need, um, so, so I want to prove, pr to prove uh, theorem one, we need some um, tools. And these are mostly tools from algebraic geometry. So here's a key, some key tools. Uh, oh, no, no, no. No, no, it's not. Uh, it, uh, it's going to have some singularity uh, at, uh, along, the, along the exceptional curves. But, uh, but no, no, it's not, not going to be complete. OK, so the, 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 the key tool key tools. So first of all um, is the adjunction formula. The adjunction formula for surfaces. And, and this says that, um, that, if you, that if you have C is a smooth curve in a Kähler surface M, in M, so, so M is a, M is a Kähler surface. If C is a smooth curve in M, then, um, then we have that 1 plus Km, the canonical bundle, intersected with C, plus C dot C divided by 2 is the genus of the curve, of the curve C. And uh, secondly, in the case where it's not smooth, so C is possibly singular, so I allow the case where you could have, could, could be singular, then you, you get the formula that the same quantity is bigger than or equal to zero, and equal to zero um, imply, it, 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 it implies that C is smooth, and then it's necessarily, in this case, the genus of C is zero. So in other words, C is actually a P1. So that's tool number one. I'm not going to prove any of these statements. Tool number two is, is what's known as the Nakai Moishazan theorem. 
But this is, this is a well-known theorem from algebraic geometry, but this is the Kähler version, which is more recent. So this is a very sort of classical theorem in algebraic geometry, but the Kähler version is in, in for Kähler services due to Buchdahl and Namari, they did dimension two, high dimensions due to Demay and Pound, but we'll stick with dimension two. What does it say? It says that, suppose, that just fix a, fix beta, which is a Kähler class, a Kähler class, on, on, on M, then if you take alpha in H11, um, if alpha squared is positive, alpha dot alpha is positive, so the integral of alpha which alpha is, is positive, alpha dot C is positive for all curves C, and um, alpha dot B is positive, for beta some fixed Kähler class, then that implies, if, it's if and only if, implies that alpha is Kähler. Okay. Now, the, the classic nakai Mushazan criterion for algebraic services would not have this condition. It just says that if the self-intersection of the class is positive and you talk with, if you take the intersection of the curve as positive, then you're Kähler. But that's not going to be true. That cannot be true for Kähler services because there exist Kähler services with no curves. And then um, you know, that statement alone could never be enough to show that alpha is Kähler because you could just take alpha's minus a Kähler class. It's obviously satisfy that. OK, so, so this one is just to make sure that you kind of rule out those, those funny cases. Number three um, is, is, the, is the Hodge index theorem. And, 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 and this says that uh, and this says that uh, if you if you if you look at the uh, h11 uh, with the this this intersection uh, form which I'm writing as dot this um, the intersection form has is is uh, is, is, is non-degenerate so the dot is non-degenerate the pairing is a non-degenerate pairing um, of type one comma the dimension of H11 minus one. So what I mean, this, these are, it has one positive eigenvalue, and and and, and this is, this is dimension is n has n minus one negative eigenvalues. So in particular, so in particular. Um, if, uh, if, if, if alpha squared is positive and alpha dot beta is zero, then either beta is zero or, or beta squared is, is negative. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the hydrogen that's there. I guess there's a fourth one I want to use, so let me see if I can squeeze it in here, which is rather simple. It says that if pi from M to M, N, um, blows down a minus one curve. It's a blowdown of a minus one curve. Right, so it says blows down E. Then that implies that the cohomology, so the cohomology of M is, is actually just given by the cohomology of N plus, plus the first term class of E. So this is generated by pulling back the cohomology from N and from the first Chern class of E. OK, so this is some basic topological fact that when you're blowing up, you're just gaining. The only thing you gain is the class of the divisor E. OK, so that's the curve E. All right, so those are the tools I'm going to use. So now, now let me give the proof of, of theorem 1 which is quite involved, actually. It uses these tools a lot. So this is, this is what I want to prove, um, just, just with this assumption. OK, okay so first of all, why is t negative? T, t, why is t finite? Um, this is easy to see because, uh, right, so we know that we have, a, we have e, right, so, so e, we, the, so there exists e, which is a minus, which is a minus one curve. 
And if I look at uh, if I look at the the volume of E along the the Kähler Ricci flow, so this is this right, this is omega t. Oh, sorry, let me just write this down, omega t. This is just E dot omega naught minus t times uh, k, k, uh, plus, plus t times k m. But, um, but this, is, this is just, uh, what is it, the integral over E of omega naught. Uh, but then if, if E is a, right, and, and then, then plus t, uh, t times k m dot E. But this has to be negative 1, because uh, if E is a negative 1 curve, so E is a minus 1 curve, so what is the definition of that? This is, remember, this, is, uh, this means that E squared is minus 1, and E is a P1. Right, so P1 has genus 0. And so from the number 1, it tells me that... Uh, that uh, if this is uh, minus 1, um, this is 0, this has, has to be minus 1. This, 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 this km dot e is minus 1. So this, is, this, this thing is just the integral, some fixed number, integral omega naught over e minus t. And then clearly that, right, that, that has to go, go, to, go to 0 as, as t tends to this this uh, this thing, and therefore t has to be less than that integral. Has to be less than or equal to that. Okay, so so we've proved that t is finite. So we know that the minus one curves have to shrink to zero in volume along the just just the volume has to go to zero. So the next uh, thing I want to prove claim. Claim one is that. Uh, yeah, okay. I, I, yeah. Claim one is um, is that I want to say that alpha. Where did I put alpha? Here's alpha. I want to claim that this alpha alpha squared is positive. I want to claim that the alpha squared is positive. And to see that, um, here's the proof of claim one. Well, suppose not. Suppose not. Then, then, uh, then alpha squared has to be zero. The reason alpha cannot be negative is alpha squared cannot be negative is just because this is a Kähler class. I mean, if you replace this capital T with a little t, this is a Kähler class, and so it's, you know, it's, the volume is going to be strictly positive for all t less than capital T. So the volume, at most, it could go to zero. It can't, 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 can't go negative. It's in the limit. So alpha squared is, is, is equal to zero. Um, but then, by definition, that says that if I take omega naught intersect with omega naught plus t c1 of k, m, this is the same as minus t c1 of k m dot with omega naught plus t of c1 of k m. I just, I just put this on the other side. This is just exactly saying alpha squared. Remember, this is the same as, as, as plus c1 of k m. So I'm just, yeah. So it seems like uh, it's a time given down uh, the minus one curve. Yes. The minus curve, we have a given time. The volume. Yeah, that's right. The volume will go to, yeah, I mean, you may have many minus one curves, but yes, it will be the, uh, you know, the, 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 the first one is when the. When you have the least, that's the first time they think the same time, all the same time, you think? They have some of the mind. Well, what I'm going to prove is that. There's going to be exact. There's going to be finitely many of them, which are disjoint, which will all shrink to zero, 
at the same time? I mean, there may be one or there may be several but, of them. Uh, that my question is, is uh, that shrink all the uh, next it does, curve? Not all the next, no, no, no. Then so you have next, uh, next Yeah, the next step will be, because you might have intersecting ones, and those will never shrink actually at the same time. There will only the disjoint ones will shrink, and that's what I'm going to prove. Okay. Okay, so, so, the, so let's, uh, right. So let's, uh, so I want to get a contradiction. And uh, I have this. Now what I claim is that, well, first of all, you see that the, the, the left-hand side is bigger than or equal to zero. Because um, this class is just the limit of Kähler classes, by definition. And so when you're intersecting with a Kähler class, this is all, always bigger than or equal to zero for any t less than capital T. So in the limit, it's going to be bigger than or equal to zero. On the other hand, I claim that the right-hand side is actually negative, less than or equal to zero. And why is that? Well, this comes from the assumption that uh, Km raised to some power has a holomorphic section, which is the same thing as saying the Kadaro dimension is not equal to negative infinity. So why is that? So let me just recall briefly the, uh, this Poincaré. This, this follows from the Poincaré de Long formula. So let's recall. Recall. Um, so, so, so if L is a line bundle, it has, has a holomorphic section L, and, sorry, hol holomorphic section S, and this has a, homicial, a metric on the line, there's a metric H on the line bundle, and then S, S vanishes to order one along D, it could, you know, could be a curve or could be sort of some of, could, be, could have several components. Then, then uh, if you look at, at um, dd bar log of s squared h, this is minus the curvature form of h plus what I write as t of d, which is the current of it. This is, a, this is a factor of 2 pi. This is the current of integration of integration for d. Algebraic cycle. And then, um, so analytic cycle, I should say. And this is true as currents. And what do I mean by that? Well, um, I mean, this is, a, this is an L1 function. You can always differentiate L1 functions in the sense of currents. You get something in the sense of currents. What it means is if you take psi as any 1, 1 form, smooth 1, 1 form, and it says, so you take smooth, then this, this uh, equality says that if you integrate uh, dd bar psi wedge log of s squared h, that's the definition of, in, of differentiating an L1 function. You have to put dd bar on the other side. This is, this is just minus rh wedge psi plus the integral, of, plus the integral over d of, of psi. And in the case where psi is closed, this just vanishes. OK, so then let's go back to this. So now what you see is that Km, right, what we see is that Km to the L has a, has a holomorphic section, S, which vanishes along some D. And so if you, um, if you look at... Uh, C, C1 of Km dot, uh, let's take uh, omega naught plus T of C1 of Km, which is the same as the cohomology class of omega T. That's it. Right. Let's, let's put this K into the L. This is actually the same as just the integral over D of omega T. And this is this is this is this is strictly positive because this is the cohomology class of omega t, and then this is this just corresponds to the curvature. Put it on the other side. This is something closed, so I don't see this term. And so the integral of the cur the c one of l wedge psi is uh, is po positive. So now I pull pull down the l, and and and. Um, and then I let t, let t go to capital T, and I see that this has to be less than or equal to zero. Okay. And then, but that implies that this thing, of course, is zero. 
It's also so it implies that omega naught dot with omega naught plus t of c1 of km is zero. Okay, so we're, so we're almost done. So I've shown this, which is not what I wanted. I want to show alpha squared is positive. I want to get a contradiction. Why is that a contradiction? Well, um, what I notice is that I can apply the Nakai Moshe's uncritical. Oh, no, I don't. I want to apply the Hodge index theorem. So the Hodge index theorem, let me say number three, implies, uh, so, so because notice that, of course, omega naught squared is positive, because it's a Kähler metric. So, so the Hodge index theorem tells me that this, which is my alpha, has to be um, either negative, which it cannot be, or then it has to be zero. So actually, then, then I get that alpha is zero. In other words, that the only possibility is that omega naught plus t of c1 of kn is zero. Okay, let, me, let me say it again. So, 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 so I have, uh, I'm taking my omega naught to be like my alpha. So this is, this is square positive, and this is like my beta. And the alpha dot beta is zero, then either this thing is zero or, or, or has negative self intersection. But this is actually my, you know, the same as my alpha here, so I know that this cannot have negative self intersection. I'm assuming it has zero self intersection. So then this has to be zero, but now you get a contradiction because, um, so that says that C1 of Km is minus 1 over T omega naught. But now you get, a, again, a, to the same argument as before, because you can take C, C1 of, if you take C1 of Km to the L, and you dot with omega naught, that's just the integral over D of omega naught, which is positive. But then this is just, what is it, minus 1 over T omega naught squared, or times L, maybe. And, and, and that's obviously negative, so, so that's a contradiction. Here, at this point, you see that I'm actually, it is actually implies that the first chain class is, pos is positive, so you're in the Fano case. So that, that's exactly the case where you, don't, you do have Kudau dimension negative infinity. Okay. All right, so that's, uh, that's the just proof of claim one. Okay, so I'm proving theorem one. So, so claim, claim two. So, so, all right, so that was the, just the first step. The second step is, I, so I want to try, try and construct a map pi. Before I do that, I'm going to find the exceptional curves. So I want to define curly E to be the set of all curves E such that alpha dot E is equal to zero. Okay. Um, then E consists consists of finitely many disjoint um, minus one curves. Okay, so that's uh, that's my claim, and those are going to be exactly the ones that I'm going to blow down. Okay. So the proof of claim two um, the first thing to notice is that e, e is non empty is non empty um, by uh, by this um, by, by the Nakai Moshison criterion because you know that alpha cannot be Kalis up. Right, alpha is the is, is the is when you stop being Kähler. So we know that alpha is not Kähler. Since alpha is not Kähler, remember the kähler ritchie flow exists as long as the cohomology class omega naught minus t c one of m is is Kähler. And so we're looking at the point where it stops being Kähler. So alpha is the first time where it's not Kähler. So alpha is not Kähler. So not being not Kähler means that. But on the other hand, we know that the square is positive. So one of these two things has to fail, and um, 
uh, there has to be, uh, well, okay. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe it's not, right, why does this one not fail? Well, I, okay, I claim that this one has to be the one that fails. The reason that you can always find one where this is true is because you can always find something where alpha dot beta is bigger than zero. And then you look at alpha dot beta minus, sorry, plus epsilon alpha. So take any k of class beta, then that's going to be true because alpha is the limit. So then you look at this, this is still going to be a Kähler class as long as epsilon is small enough, but now this is strictly positive because alpha squared is positive. So this one actually never is not going to be the one that fails. Okay, so that, that's, the, that's the reason. Okay. And then, um, so, 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 then, uh, so then you must have some curve where this is actually equal to zero. So, so E is non-empty. Non and now let's, I want to say that everything inside there has to be a minus one curve. So let, let E be an element of curly E. So I want to show that E is a minus one curve. Well, what we notice is that, um, so if E is in E, then, then alpha dot E is zero. But alpha is omega naught uh, plus T C1 of Km. Right, so this is zero. But then, but then omega naught dot E is just the integral of a Kähler metric over the curve E, so that's positive. So this implies that C1 of Km dot E has to be negative. Or in other words, K, let me just write this as Km dot E is negative. All right, let's look at these E's could be singular. Let's look at this at the, formula, the junction formula. So from one, what do I say? Right, so from one, what we see is that uh, one plus Km dot E plus E dot E over two, this has to be bigger than zero, but on the other hand, we know that this is negative. Well, Um, that implies that uh, e is, cannot be too uh, cannot be too negative. Uh, oh, uh, okay, hang on, I'm missing a one step in the argument here. I want to. Why is? Oh, oh, sorry. Right, I, there was a key point I'm missing. Is, is that I use the Hodge index theorem. So number three implies that actually E squared has to be negative. Okay. Because, um, because, because alpha squared is positive and alpha dot E is zero. So the Hodge index theorem says alpha squared is posit positive, alpha dot, let's put that E is zero, then either E is zero or E squared is negative. Well, E is zero is not possible. You can't have a curve with which would be cohomologically zero. Uh, so it must be alpha dot E is zero. Uh, it must, must be, uh, E squared has to be negative. Right, so now this is also negative. The only possibility is that this is minus one and this is minus one. So it says that k, k dot E is minus one and E squared is minus one. And that's exactly, and then, and then you have equality, which actually says that e, from here, E is smooth and it's a P1. It's a P1. And, 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 and that says exactly that. So a, a smooth rational curve with self-intersection minus one is what we mean as, as a minus one curve. So E is a minus one curve. OK, good. So next thing is, um, is I want to, to okay, so, 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 I, so I, I know that they, they consist of minus one curves. I want to show that they're disjoint. Okay, so, so why are they disjoint? Let me go over here. So to show they're disjoint, so, so, so recall that the, so, so if you let e, E1 and E2 be in, curly E, and, and let, let's assume they're distinct, so they're not the same. 
So why don't they intersect? So, so E1 dot E2 is the number I mentioned last time, is the number of intersection points. So I want to, I want to show that this intersection number is zero, and that will say that they're disjoint. That's what I want. But now the way to see that is you look at E1 plus E2, intersect that with alpha. And then we know that's zero because each one of those is, is zero, because they're both in E. Um, but now I apply the um, Hodge index theorem because I know that alpha squared is positive. And that tells me that this thing is either zero, which again could, cannot happen. I can't have E1 is minus E2. They're both effective divisors, if you like. So the only possibility is that E1 plus E2 squared is negative. But now I multiply this thing out. This is E1 squared plus E2 squared. I know each one is minus 1, plus twice E1 dot E2. But this one is, this is minus 2 plus twice E1 dot E2. Well, I know that this is an integer, the intersection. It's the number of intersection points. Minus 2 plus this is, positive, is negative. Well, the, it's, not, right, it's the number of intersection points. So it's a non-negative integer. The only possibility is that it's 0. Okay. So this implies that e, e, E1 dot E2 is 0. Okay. So we, we've shown that they're disjoint. We've shown that they're minus 1 curves. The only thing left is to show that there's finitely many of them. Okay, why are there finitely many? Well, this is easy, actually. So, so there's finitely many. Um, that's because uh, if, you look at the, if you look at the classes, so, so, um, right, so, so let, let E1 up to EK be distinct elements of curly E, then the first churn classes, C1 of E1 up to C1 of EK, these are linearly independent in H11, uh, in, in H11. So this is just a vector space. These are elements of a vector space. So to show that a set of elements is inde linearly independent, I just say, well, let's set some linear sum to be equal to 0. And then I need to show that all of the coefficients are 0, like what we teach in linear algebra. So then, uh, but then you just intersect with EI. So you dot with EI. And then you get that, you know, since they're all disjoint, all of them vanish except the AI. And you get minus AI is 0, which implies that AI is 0. For all I. So they're linearly independent. But this is a finite dimensional vector space. So this is a finite dimensional. So you can't have infinitely many. It would contradict the finite dimensionality of H11. OK. So, so that says the, right. So that says that it's finitely many. Okay, so we've proved claim two. Okay, fi finally, uh, claim three is that, um, right, is, so, so I need to say, that the, so what's pi? So pi is just going, I'm just going to define pi to be the, I define pi to be the map blowing down these, these EIs, E1 to EK. So define pi from n, m to n to be this holomorphic. So remember I said last time that if you have a minus 1 curve, then right, it's a theorem that there exists a, a holomorphic map which blows them down. Now we have finitely many disjoint ones, so you can still do that. So let this be the, the, the map blowing down um, the, the elements of E, the, the elements, let's say, E1 to EK of, of curly E. So now claim three, 
and this, this should complete the statement, I think, is that, is that alpha is the pullback of beta for, for beta Kähler class. Kähler class on N. So that's my claim three. And here, you might imagine I'm going to use number four. So, so alpha, so by four, we know that alpha is the pullback of something, let's call it beta, we don't know it's Kähler, yeah. but it's pulled back of something from the base, plus, so we know that the cohomology of M is generated by the cohomology um, of uh, N, plus the, 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 just the, the cohomology classes of the EIs. Right? So this is this, plus some uh, sum right, of, of AI, C1 of EI, where I goes from 1 to K. So, so I want to show that the AIs are zero. But that's not difficult, because if I just do EI dot alpha, by definition of E, these are all zero. So this is zero. But on the other hand, this is the pullback of beta dot EI. And then remember, they're disjoint. So EI dot EJ is zero whenever I is not equal to J. So I'm only left with... Um, with a minus AI because the self-intersection EI dot EI is minus one. But on the other hand, what is this? This is the integral over EI of the pullback of, of beta. But that has to be zero because if you think about it, okay, so for his N, right, that's the point basically. Is N, so you're taking a point P. Yeah, there's no, there's no area there. Because if you, here's beta here. When you pull it back, it's just going to vanish in the directions of E. As you're pulling back something from here, it's going to vanish. So, so, so actually, this is zero. So that tells me that the AI is all zero. That tells me that A1 to AK are all zero. OK. So I can just get rid of this. So then, almost done. To prove claim, so, so I know that, so I know, so I have that, that alpha is the pullback of something from the base. But now the question is, is, is beta, is, is beta Kähler? Well, well, I'm going to obviously try and use number two. So from number two, I have a criterion. So I want to use number two, the Nakai Mojizan criterion. So let's look at this. So, so, um, so look at beta squared. Well, beta squared is the same as alpha squared. Because beta squared right, is just the integral over n of, of this beta squared. Um, but, but if you integrate, you can always just subtract the points. It's the same thing. Doesn't affect the integral. Beta, you know, beta is some nice cohomology class. Uh, I mean, I take beta to be a representative, a smooth representative of the cohomology class, to be more precise. Uh, but then we know that pi, the Bloder map is an isomorphism outside of these points. So this is the same as the integral of the pullback of beta squared on on m minus the the curves. But these, this is a has measure zero. Again, takes. This is some smooth one one form, and so this is just the same as the integral of alpha squared over m. Okay, which is exactly this. So this is positive. Okay. So we know that beta squared is positive. Next, um, why is it the case that beta dot c is po okay? So let's let c be a curve in and so again, here's my picture, here's my point that I'm blowing down. I'm just imagining just, just to have one minus one curve. Then take a, some curve in N here. It could pass through P or, or not. Not important. If it passes through, then you know, you'll have it here. Right, so, so, so the, the, then beta dot C is the same as the pullback 
of beta dot the pullback of C for the same reason. Now this is this is C. But now C is right, th th this is alpha dot C, but this is not zero, because if it was zero, it would be an E. So this is, has to be strictly positive. Because sorry, this is pullback of C. Because because um because the pullback of C is not an E. It's not an E. It's not a, not, not, not an E. Okay. So that's true. And then the last thing is just to check. But the last one should be, should be easy, I think, um, for the same reason as before. So, so we know that we know that the... Um, uh, okay, so, so let, let, let gamma be a Kähler class on N. class on n, then beta dot gamma is the same thing as the pullback of alpha dot the pullback of gamma, but this has to be bigger than or equal to zero because alpha is the limit of Kähler classes. Sorry, that should just be this, alpha dot pullback of gamma. Again, you can always pull back just, just because it, just pick it from the definition. Um, uh, but so, so this is always non-negative, but then you just, again, you look at beta dot, and then you take gamma plus epsilon beta, and this is positive for epsilon small, and positive. And as long as epsilon is small enough, then gamma plus epsilon beta is also a Kähler class, because being Kähler class is an open condition, and therefore, and therefore you satisfied the, the, the final condition. And so, so that, that, that proves that beta is Kähler. This implies beta is Kähler. So I, I, I just checked all of the three conditions of, of number two. OK, so that proves claim three. And, and I think we're done, right? So we're done with the, we're now done with that, uh, with that theorem because, yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. OK. So uh, what I want to do. Um, Next, so, so notice that none of this used anything about the Kähler Ricci flow. Right? I was not using, I was not using the Kähler Ricci flow at all. This is just some sort of a general fact, I guess. Yeah, just the definition of the maximum existence time. Yeah, and the fact that it was a limit of Kähler classes. Yeah. Um, so, so let's go back. So now we're going to actually do some analysis and look at the Kähler Ricci flow. So, so, so to, to prove proof of theorem two. So I want to show um, that now you get the you get the smooth conversions. Okay. Well. Yeah, the maximal existence time, yes. So T, by definition, is, OK, I, I have an M naught, right? omega naught. This by de T, T is, by definition, the supremum of all T positive, such that omega naught minus T times C1 of M is a Kähler class. So that's the definition of capital T. And then, uh, and then alpha is just the limiting class. So as t, t goes to capital T, it's the first time when this becomes, stops being Kähler, and that's the capital T. In general, it could be infinite, but in this case, it's Kodaira dimension, which is not minus, it has to be finite. It has to, it has so to be finite, yeah. So we prove, right, we prove that it has to be finite. Right. Otherwise, area would be minus capital T. Right, right, right. exactly. So it's infinite, but it's not finite. Yes. Well, in theory, you could uh, say that depends on what the minus one curve area, right? But, but, but you have to uh, on uh, Well, yeah. I mean, you. I guess you look at. You could look at all the minus one curves and. Yeah. <laughs> which which one for us? Yeah, I mean, or something like that. the right. The definition. Yeah, it has to be. 
essentially, the, essentially the time of first one yeah. that shrinks it has to area be. zero yeah. among finite many. Um, um, all the first, uh, P1, first block of block count. The. Remember, you have finite many, finite many, minus. Yeah, zero. I think it just would be like the. Because the intersection with C1 km, right? That, that's the area. Yes. Right. Yeah. 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 So it would. It would. You, you would. You would take um, something like the ind the volume of. I think it just comes down to the volume of E. Right? So right. Uh, with respect to omega naught. So you want to take the. Um, I know the the, the smallest uh, the smallest number the smallest the volume well, volume of E with the smallest. Right. The, the, it's the E it's the minus one curve with the smallest volume with respect to the initial metric. I think that that would be the definition of capital T. Yeah. Okay, maybe that's a good time to stop. The next time, uh, so in the next hour, I'll, I'll discuss this.